Hi. Okay. To all my students and anyone else, I know I talk fast. Did I say that in the first lesson? I talk quickly and a lot. I think I said that in the very first thing. Um, I do. It's it, uh, it's just because there's so much going on and it's exciting. Um, okay, so so we need to uh, we're inching we're inching toward algebra. Not as fast as I would like, but the the reality is. The reality is, the more comfortable you are with all these things, the better it will be. I I use this equivalent with um, with playing soccer. Uh, I was a baseball player, big time, love it. Um, my ex-husband was a soccer player. And I never got soccer when I was younger. I didn't have any good coaching, and he did. Sorry, I had no good coaching in soccer during my high school years. That's all I'll say. Um, but my ex-husband is a phenomenal coach. And, um... I used to think that soccer was about giving it a big kick, and if I launched it, then that meant I was good. And he's like, all Americans, right? I mean, he's American, but he's from Brazil. So, so he gave me an understanding of the game of soccer, right? So I don't have foot skills like he does. I'm still terrified to do a header. I can't trap the ball. Like I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm skilled with my hands, like with softball and and kind of oblique, and basketball, right? But my ex-husband taught me about the basis of the game. That now, when I'm out playing, I feel super confident in what I'm supposed to do. Super confident. I have exactly like a one half of a move to try to get the ball away from somebody, and if that doesn't work, you know. So, but I'm calmer with the ball and I don't give it a big kick. Okay, what was this, what was that story about, Becca? What was all my stories about, who knows? But it's this. To be able to compete in the field of mathematics, you don't have to know every awesome new trick. You don't have to have all these things memorized, but you do have to have an appreciation for the totality of what is going on. And if you're confident on the playing field, you will learn more. You just will. I was not a confident soccer player, and I and it showed. And truly, my ex-husband gave me confidence just to play. I have played, and I still got yelled at when I didn't do a certain offsides trap. It's like, come on, man, in an adult league. <laughs> but like, but the point is, is that plus, why are adults yelling at other adults as they're playing, and why are children yelling? These are questions I've never understood. But my point is, he gave me confidence, and I want to give you confidence. You don't have to, the, the details, my ex-husband could dribble the ball like a thousand times, I think was his, was his record. He would just sit there and kick it and kick it. You can't see my slippers, but they're there. I'm pretending to kick the ball. Okay, and I have students I've played with who have amazing foot skills. I don't have that. I don't. But I have learned to have the confidence to let them, my ex-husband told me, he was like, just do this. You can still play defense on the most razzle dazzle. It's all just for show. <coughs> He's a phenomenal coach. His name is Ben. He's a great guy. Um, and uh, and so I want to give that to you. I want to give you confidence to go out into the field and play because I can't dribble a thousand times and he can. But if I really, really cared enough, I could. But I love to play. It's one of my favorite games to play. And I'm not the most amazing person, but like, look at me. I like I, my soccer career has been the that is in the back in with Doc Brown and Marty McFly. Yeah. Okay. So impactful motivational speech over. Let's do some math. Let's talk about factors. So I don't even really need this right now. And this is going to go longer. It just is. So dial in, friends. Dial in. Let's talk about factors. Um, this is so important. So important. So remember your multiplication table? Remember? Remember? Pull it out. Look up a number like 60. Okay? So in the grid, find how many 60s there are and circle them. Okay? 
and then you see the numbers that made that, those are factors of 60. Now, factors of 60 are, are, are all the numbers that you can divide something by and get another whole number out, another integer. We're going to go whole numbers and we're going to scrap negatives for right now, okay? So 60, I, th I don't know why it doesn't quite work. You can actually hear it trying. Oh, maybe it's because the battery is like all crusted. Oh, maybe that's why. Um, we're going to get this puppy fixed today is what we're going to do. Um, yeah, that battery had seen better days. But, I don't even know if I have those. Okay, 60. If you don't have, if you're a parent or you're my student and you don't have a radial clock in your house, you need to get one. Okay? Don't, I mean, if you're making a target run for like coffee and Doritos and, you know, hand sanitizer, go ahead and pick one up if you can afford that also at the time. Everybody should have a radial clock because it helps you understand different bases. But 60, the reason we use 60, we as humanity, use 60, and this exists this way, is incredibly specific. What do we say is a quarter of an hour? How many minutes? 15. 4 and 15 equals 60. What do we say is a half hour? How many minutes? 30 minutes. 30 times 2. 60. All the little clicks. 10. How many are there? 10 times times 6. There's, uh, excuse me, 6 every 2. And then how many, uh, uh, how many, uh, Hours are in a, well, in half a day, 12, 12 times 5, 60, uh, uh, how many hours are in a day, 24, mm, but that has to be two, so that's, that's, that, that's not going to work, um, 24 is not a factor, because we do it twice, and that then makes it 24 times 5.5 over 2, and that's not going to work, okay, not a factor, factors are whole numbers, so, I'm going to finally fix this. I don't have my wall, so it's really blank. I put this up there because I like it. I like it that way. Okay, so factors are any numbers that multiply. So let's just look at 60. But this is why it's so important for you to have your multiplication table and keep it by you. It's like your abacus, for darn sake. Okay, let's start with 12 and then we'll go to 60, okay? What numbers multiply to be 12? Well, as I've taught students before, you can start in the calculator and just divide if you want to. You should know this in your head, but if you're not comfortable, you still can. Every number can be divided by itself in one, meaning that if I have 12 raspberry things, yeah, there are wrappers around, okay? I'm on quarantine. It's I need to clean my house. Okay, if you have 12 and you have 12 people, everybody gets one, right? That you can always divide that in ones, always. Um, so we're not going to count that for now. Well, that's fine. We can. Twelve and one. Um, and then you go. Can twelve be divided by two, and get an even number? Yes, it can. And you get six out the other side, right? And then say, can twelve be divided by three? Well, yes, it can. And you get four out the other side. And as I've said to students, if you'll notice, the factor pair—they're called factor pairs. You're not going to, there's no reason to put 4 in. You already know that if you divide 12 by 4, you're going to get 3. And if you do, divide it by 5, you're going to get a fraction because there's nothing to be on the other side. So you get to 6, right? And same with 6 to 12. So, um, this is finding factor pairs, okay? All right, and it's wildly important to know what these are, but even more important is to know this. Every number can be made up of a multiplication of other numbers. Now, primes are only itself in one. 12, oh, 12 is in prime, 11. 11's prime factorization is equal to 11 times one. Look at all those, this is why I like 11. Um, 11, 1, oh my god. Okay, um, uh, so
So, but 12, now all of these multiply to 12 because they're factor pairs. But 12, let's take any one of those, not this, because that one's just a prime. 12, let's do 6 and 2. Well, now we ask ourselves this idea of prime or composite, okay? And so there's no, oh man, I need a lesson on vocabulary. We're going to list all the vocabulary. Prime, composite. Now, we just said prime are numbers that can only be divided by itself in one. Composite numbers are ones that have factor pairs. They can be made up of other numbers. Whole numbers. We're in the realm of the integer right now. We're just going to say whole numbers. We're actually in the realm of whole numbers, natural numbers. Zero doesn't count either. We're in the realm of natural numbers. So 2 is prime. And it's also the same with your multiplication table. It's good to know your primes up to about, well, you should know 2 is the only even prime. 2, 3, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. You should at least be comfortable with realizing those are primes. Is 6 prime or composite? It's composite. It can, can be multiplied to two num Two numbers can multiply to be it. 3 and 2. By circling those because they're prime, that means it's the end of the line. So 12 can uniquely be multiplied 2 times 2 times 3. And you'll notice 2 times 2 is 4, and then 3 is left over. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 is left over. All these multiplied together are 12, anyone? Okay, this is 12's prime factorization. And it's in knowing this that um, it's just wildly helpful um, in reducing fractions and equivalent fractions. Okay, so I actually think that's all we're going to do today is factors. And I'll do a couple more examples, okay? Good job. I know I have story time is 12 minutes. I said settle in. It's not even close to 20. <laughs> Unless we're going to drink alcohol. All right. Stay safe. Stay sane. This too shall pass. Find a good book, not just math. All right. See ya.